podcast you're about to listen to is a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB Financial. ATB sponsors hockey all the way from Tom Thumb and Pee Wee to the pros. They also love helping local volunteers whose tireless efforts often make hockey possible in their communities. For more on how ATB is here for you, head over to atb.com slash listens. to you by I forget what what are we with the Alberta Podcast Network powered by ATB we literally just talked about this the spooktacular Halloween special Uh, this is Joel I'm sitting to the right of me is Sharky McSharkerson and to the left of me is Banana Man Uh, hello Welcome to the show, guys. Hello. Do you, want, do you want to tell... Should we just let people guess who is the shark? We have a left shark and we have a banana. Should we let people guess or do you do you want to reveal which of you... I'm not actually dressed up. In any Carl and Mike are. Yeah, Joel's, Joel's literally wearing the exact same thing Joel wears every single... His official Fourth Line podcast audio recording outfit, yeah. which is a t-shirt and, and hat is literally what I wear every day of my life. So, yeah. James. Um, yeah, this is Halloween, guys. You guys have do you both have parties tonight or is Mike just dressed up for the fun? No, <laughs> Mike up. Mike just Mike is dressed up the way he dresses every day too. He's he is always. He goes full banana to work. Uh, like, full transparency, guys. I forgot it was Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Mike's ca- it's casual Friday. Yeah. It's casual Friday, gotta wear a banana suit. My my favorite part about it is not sure he's wearing a banana costume, but he's also wearing his sunglasses inside. <laughs> but that's like that's what makes the that's I know what makes exactly it. that's what so, that's what makes it for me too. Uh, I I am not I'm not really into Halloween, so like I you guys need to like you're gonna have to carry this for me tonight. Um. Which is ironic that I got to do the intro. Um, but I find it hard to believe that you're not into Halloween, given how spooky you got right there. Uh, you, was that pretty good? I don't know. I like. I think it's because I was doing like sound effects on Monday. This is just carrying forward now. Like I know that the fierceness of my shark costume really over portrayed my confidence, but I was scared. Uh, yeah. Well, you're. I don't. Your your costume is pretty fierce. Um, you have a squished nose right now, though. Oh, you need to get that get that point going. Just so you can. There you go. <laughs> now you're looking fierce. That, now we're now we're going. And then Those... I've got my flippers. Yeah. <laughs> do I look? Do I look like I was at the Super Bowl? You look. Yes. I don't know. Like, see, this is the thing. I. I'm not sure you can be uncoordinated as the left shark. Like you just have you just, seen me dance? I guess that's true. Fair enough. <laughs> point point made. Take him back. I will. I will concede that point. So but like in, all, in the rest of your life, you're a pretty coordinated person. Yeah, some maybe. Yeah, in times. On in all honesty, like I'm not the hugest fan of Halloween. Um, every year I like scrounge together some sort of last minute costume. This is actually a borrowed shark costume. Um, and I think today my wife scrounged together the makings of a Katy Perry costume. So she, she will be going as uh or I guess I will be going as her left shark. I'm really quite disappointed that she's not going as the left shark and you're not going as Katy Perry. Yeah, Mike and I were already talking about this, about how that's what we were hoping. Because you didn't act, when you told us what you guys were dressing <laughs> as, you didn't actually specify. I, I wasn't explicit. Yeah, that's true. On who was who, and we were hoping a little Katy Perry, a little Carl Perry. The thing is, is that for me to pull that off would be 
doing things that just no one wants. So, or everybody wants. And speak for yourself, Carl. <laughs> No, I don't think so. So this is our Halloween spooktacular, our first ever Halloween spooktacular. Um, for me, like like I said, I, I'm not the biggest fan. Mike's got his uh, everyday costume on. And so, you know, I think he, we know that what he's doing, Joel is doing nothing. But as kids, we all did something, right? Like we all went trick-or-treating. We all got some candy and sure, you dress up in the costume, but the costume is a means to an end. We're not there to dress up. There's some people who do. I was not one of those. I am not, like, big into dress up. I didn't, never was. And so, for me, I was there for the candy. That That's key. And it, it's carried on through life. There's a lot of things that I show up for just for the food. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely grew up a big, big fan of Halloween. Uh Mostly to, to Carl's point for the candy for that like November first November second stomach ache that you got from eating nothing but Milky Ways and uh, and Hershey's Kisses for for two straight days, but also for a little bit of the mischief and adventure. I mean, let let's face it, like Halloween for me as a kid was sort of like the early days of anonymity on the internet. It's like I was you know I had either some sort of ninja mask or a mustache on every single year for Halloween, so you didn't know who I was. You don't know where I live. I can get into anything. There's no danger for me. There's no repercussions on Halloween night. So that's that was a, that was a big part of, of what I got into. But I'm, I'm really curious, Joel. Like, so you're not into Halloween now? Were you like never into Halloween? Because like I thought I thought you would have been a candy kid. Well, we did the candy thing. I was like just like any other kid. We j- I dressed up, but like we, I don't know. Usually it was more like a Halloween party rather than like the trick or treating. Like, the trick-or-treating ended pretty early for me. So it was more like me, me and, like, a couple of friends, we just get together. And we, like, we were, like, the designated candy hander-outers. And, like, we'd make anyone older than 10, like, sing or dance for their candy. That was always fun. Um, but, okay. But I, I think this is, this, is, this is the biggest question, though. We have had multiple lists. The, like the fifth line is becoming a lists podcast. We we've Top done five Mex- podcasts for lists. Yeah, we've done we've done Mexican food. We've done ice cream. I'm um, I'm pretty sure I'm at some point I'm sure we've done barbecue. But, so we got to go top top. Are we gonna go top three? Top three favorite candy. Let's go. I think top three is a good number. All right. So, and like always, we got to we're gonna go three to one. So. Uh- Carl, what's your like all time number three? <laughs> which which sounds what is the most important third best candy ever? Uh, for me, I personally big fan of the miniature M and M's, and you like always well, mini like, M and M's or no, like sorry, just yeah. regular M and M's. I'm just gonna say M and M's. Yeah, M and M's were my go to because what I was gonna say. Was prob- was one of my other ones, and I might get to that one. M and M's was my go to candy, uh, my third most go to candy. I love definitely M and M's over Smarties. Like if you if you're a Smarties person, um, you can stop listening right now, and I would not be upset. So, um, and we'll we'll clarify Smarties for you Americans in a second because we'll get there. Yes. All the Canadian all the Canadians that are listening right now are like, yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, like we 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 agree with Carl as per usual. Carl's right. Um Yeah, all yeah. the Americans are like those are not the same things. And so, so uh Mike, what's your 3? Number 3 for me, I would probably go with something like the miniature Twix bar. So I love the regular Twix bar. I mean, obviously, it's it's perfect for, for you to be able to give one to a friend or just totally fat kid it up and eat them both by yourself and shame in your bedroom. But, you know, Twix, Twix bars were like a big treat for me as, as a kid. So that's one thing I always look forward to in Halloween when they had the little tiny ones because then you can get away with eating about 40 of those son, those son of guns in one night with uh, without too, too many negative repercussions. Uh, so, yeah, Twix for me is definitely a clear number three. I don't know, how about you, Joel? I'm going to go Twizzlers. That's my, that's my go-to. And like, and again, all you Americans out there, we don't have red vine up here, so that's not like, so it's not a thing. Like, so if you have licorice, it's Twizzlers or like no name brand. 
So I don't think I've ever seen. That being said, Red Vine's still not as good as Twizzlers. Whoa, podcast over. <laughs> so, because uh, I have had a Red Vine in my day, and Twizzlers are still better. But I was, I love, I love the the Twizzlers. So not black though, not the black Twizzlers, red yeah, ones. Those, those ones don't so. taste. All right, number two. Before Where I get to at? my number two, I'm I'm a little bit concerned with what's happening at Mike's house right now because the banana is starting to peel. You may not have noticed this, Joel. Um, the the top has been come off. It's starting to own. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said anything. I was we, like, now nah, you're just yeah. making it worse, Carl. Yeah, I regret the everything. Cost, um, the, my number the sunglasses two, are or, staying on, though. Yeah, the sunglasses, sunglasses are, staying are still on. on. Um, my number two. Not Reese's Pieces, but the full Reese peanut butter cups. Those were money. It was the exact same as getting, like, it was the exact same. There was nothing different about it. You just got less of it. So it's not like there was the proportions changed from a regular peanut butter cup. It was all the goodness of chocolate and peanut butter, but you only just got a third of it. So you just, and you get enough of them that you don't care that it's only a third the amount. Loved it. That's my number two. Reese's peanut butter cup. I'm so Love glad we agree things. on these. I know, I, I know. know we're agreeing on number one. Oh, we are totally going to agree on number one. Uh, Mike, do you like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, or is that going? Are you going somewhere else? Those may or may not have been my number two, also. But let's uh, let let's let's come up with something else just for diversity's sake. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so just for the record, I think if anyone wanted to, um, we have discovered tonight that. Peanut butter cups are the official candy of the Fifth Line podcast. The official second favorite candy of the of the yeah. Fifth Line podcast. Like if you want to hand us send us something that we're all fairly okay with but don't love, peanut butter cups. Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, so so different number two. Let's go with uh, the Nestle's Crunch Bar. I love I love the milk chocolate bar with those Rice crispy Crunchies in it. Uh, something about just breaking up. Uh, I don't I don't like to say the monotony of regular milk chocolate because it's freaking delicious, but. Just adds a little bit of crunch, a little bit of texture, a little bit of pop to go along with the chocolate. I love me some Nestle Crunch Bar. That I remember, like that that chocolate bar is not that old. It came out like I think it came out when we were kids, right? Like, but it feels like it's a, a really old chocolate bar. But I th- I don't think it's that old. But anyways, that's it's a solid. It's a, that's a solid one. Um. I take it back. It is extremely old. It's 1938. So, so it's <laughs> new to you. Though. It's new to me. Yeah. I always maybe they re-released it or something like that. I don't know. I feel I just remember it like kind of. I don't know. I don't know why I'm remembering this. Spe- speaking of being old, before we get to our number ones, um, I I want to thank both of you guys for something right now. Um, in my life. I am typically always the youngest person around. So right now on the fifth line, I am the youngest individual on the show. Um, mm. With my most of my friend groups, I am the youngest person around. Uh, today I was at a uh, a post school get together. Turns out, out of the ten of us there, I was the oldest, and I was incredibly disappointed. Um, yeah, how's and it I, feel? I, I I honestly didn't know how to react to it. Like I've I've never been the oldest person in a group of more than like two or three. I've never been the old man in the group. So thank you for returning some normalcy to me. Fair yeah, enough, you punk kid. <laughs> that's that's the spirit. Yeah, they were literally. Never mind. Um, my number one, because Joel, you're you're sticking with your number two, right? You're not you're not deviating like Mike. No, no, I'm sticking. All right, I'm sticking. My, my number two is one that I I'm honestly. Uh, it has been my favorite for years, and this year I had some, and I'm questioning myself because it wasn't as good, and I I need to have a variety of types because it could have just been that one manufacturer messed it up, but candy corn is my number one favorite Halloween candy. It is something that Boo. you... Boo. unlike Boo. Unlike the fool's who now sell mini eggs all year long, ruining the Easter greatness that is mini eggs. Candy corn is a Halloween delight. It is, there is the fun of eating it in thirds. So you can take your time, eat each color separately. You can enjoy the, the sugariness of it. It is just the purest of sugar, the flavor. Sure. It might not be as great as chocolate, 
There, but there's just something about the candy. There is no of it. flavor. There is. You are eating the wrong candy corn. Like it is not a deep flavor. It is not a rich, a uh, joy to your palate. But what it gives you there's, is great. Like it. No, it is what no. it is. It doesn't pretend to be anything else. Candy corn is a piece of corn turned into candy. That's exactly like it doesn't. It's it's not pretending to be something else. It is what it is. Candy corn number one. I don't I don't care how wrong you two are with your number ones, but that's it. I don't think there's a, like there's no way it's actual corn. <laughs> like let's be very clear about this. Are you there's no sure? Actual like there might be corn syrup in it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's just the shape of it. I know. Kind of looks like a piece of corn. It's not like hey. It's not like it's not like yeah. It's not it's, it's not candy it's, corn. It's not candied corn. It's not like a candy apple. Is what you're saying? No, no, no. So, um, and uh, we're not talking about this anymore because I know Mike agrees with me, and that is like not only is that not the best candy out there, like it's not even in the like top hundred. I wouldn't even put it in my top hundred. So not it, not even close. It does. Candy, candy corn is good for two things, Carl. Putting on your teeth to make fake fangs and throwing in the trash. Look, Mike, you know what you could also be? Like, this costume you have on right now could be a cob of candy corn. We don't know. We haven't seen what's inside. Oh, it's a banana. It's clearly a banana. Don't even pretend to be that. Stop left sharking this and, <laughs> and being all over the place here, Carl. This is disgraceful. This like I don't even know if we should like release this list now. It's just ruined and sad and I'm disappointed. Yeah, but the list, the list I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping Mike redeems us here. Oh, no pressure. Well, uh for for number for number one on my list, it's uh it's not just my favorite for Halloween, it's my favorite all the time, Kit Kats. I absolutely adore the Kit Kats. Got the milk chocolate drizzle over those nice little wafery things. And you can break them apart into either four pieces or like two if you're getting the, the little bite-sized ones. But again, uh, apparently I'm a big fan of snacks that you can sort of segment and eat either uh, either in, apparently. in halves or holes. Yeah, but I will go crazy for Kit Kats. I was uh, I was kind of a terrible sibling growing up because I would absolutely go into like my my uh, my siblings uh, like pillowcases full of candy, and I would take all of their Kit Kats and replace it with candy corn. Uh, just completely just screwing them over and sticking them with the worst candy in the world and taking the most delicious thing. See, place. here's what I thought you were going to say as the worst sibling is you go in, you leave all the Kit Kats there, but you break them not down the proper divide, but break them like down the middle. What kind of animal do you take me, <laughs> Carl? Hey, tiny, tiny Mike might have been a tiny terror. That's I don't true. That passed you. Kit, yeah, Kit Kats are not on my list, mainly because that was my mother's favorite candy growing up. So, like, they disappeared very quickly from my stash of candy because she would just take them from me. So, I wasn't. It wasn't until I was like twenty three did I have a Kit Kat bar. And <laughs> no, so, <laughs> that that can't be true. Uh, Carl, that's what we call in, an exaggeration. <laughs> I don't know what I had, but they, but I, I was not a huge fan of the Kit Kat, and I liked my mother, so I, so I was happy to let her have my Kit Kat bars. That was nice of you. But uh, my favorite, and it is, as far as I'm concerned, the best candy out there, Halloween time, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like Carl's, where I don't really see these things. At least in Canada, we don't really have them around during the rest of the year, and we call them rockets. But from my understanding, and maybe Mike can tell me if I'm wrong, I believe they are the equivalent of Smarties in the States. Is that correct? Well, let's, let's go through this. So Smarties in the States are those tiny little almost like chalky sugar discs. Yeah, that, that comes stacked in a row of about twenty in clear plastic cell in, in clear plastic that you unroll and can either pop them in your mouth or grind them up into a powder and blow them in somebody's face and then take all their Kit Kats. I don't know what you guys, what you guys do with rockets up there, but absolutely that is that is what we call Smarties here, not yeah. the M M&M and M lookalikes. Yeah, so 
Ah, uh, yeah. So that's what that's what we call rockets. Those are so whatever. So Smarties in the states, rockets here. Those are my favorite. I don't. I, and I realize that they're kind of like like I understand that at times they look like you're eating chalk, but they don't taste like you're eating chalk. I was gonna say you you criticize candy corn for having no flavor. Rockets literally just taste like candy dust. There's there's no, nothing there's, there. Each one of them tastes different. There's a different flavor for each one. Each I, each row it, of the candy corn has a distinct flavor, Joel. No, it doesn't. I'm reading on Wikipedia right now about how it's wax and corn syrup. It just says no flavor added, literally on Wikipedia. So it, that's your source. Yeah, it's not. It's, no. Would you have a better candy corn source? Um, I'm efforting. Is, is there a better candy corn source? I don't think so. I think Wikipedia is about as reliable as you can get. I'm fairly certain. Unless you'd like to bust out Britannica Encyclopedia over here. I we Yeah, can... I'm, I'm on it. I'm going to go find my C book. It's out there somewhere. Carl is currently asking Jeeves. Please hold. So, okay. So I'm, I have not yet found the Encyclopedia. But what I did find was a very uh, informative article. And... While sure, Wikipedia is great, Cosmo has the nine scariest things about eating candy corn. So I'm fairly certain that we have this on lockdown. This is, is the definitive source because um, it is not just wax and corn syrup. Candy corn contains 12 different ingredients. Um, well, this is, I don't know. We'll have to, maybe should we put a poll out? Maybe early next week or something like that on how well, we'll put it out on Halloween. We'll put each of our favorites in a poll and see what the listeners decide is the definitive top candy of the fifth line. So the, I guess the biggest thing, though, is that while eating all of these delightful candies, did you ever watch like the Halloween specials? from TV shows and or movies. Is that something that you guys got into? Like, I like as much as I didn't like Halloween, I still would always watch the Halloween special because you're just the TV shows that you like. But um, which of those, I'm, I'm going to guess that we did that. Which of those ones did you guys like the most? Like, let's break some of these down. So when I, when I was a kid, the one that I always was super pumped for was the Home Improvement Halloween specials. Yes! And those were... Those were those are the best, hands down, and arguably still some of the best at incorporating Halloweeniness and like what it means to you as a kid into the show. Well, and there was those, and then there was also like The Simpsons, like Absolutely. Treehouse they, of Horror episodes were yeah. were like a dest- like appointment viewing in the t- in the tiny household growing up. Hundred percent. Was it? I'm trying to think, like, so, like, Home Improvement, was it, like, was it Wilson? Is that the guy that was across the way? Yeah. Exactly. So you would always, you'd, you'd be waiting for the scene in the episode where you get to see Wilson away from the fence in his costume, only to see that his costume incorporated a piece of the fence being carried around with him. <laughs> so you still couldn't see his face. Wilson! But which, like, as much as, and I think, I think it's, I think we've talked about, this before but like to me as much as good as those were the community halloween episodes there's no there's no comparison like i think that is the bar of which everyone else is compared to now like i can't like i was i'm pretty sure i watched it not that long ago like the like army taco meat or whatever that they sold and turned everyone into zombies classic yeah that one was like was that the same that was the same episode as the uh, the dance where they hired Green Day. Was that the same one? Or was that, that a, was that not a Halloween episode? I don't think that was a Halloween episode. So, so, no, I think. Well, there was also an episode where, like, the other one was it not where Pierce took some pills that he didn't know what he was taking. And then Jeff had to come and get him out from underneath the pile of chairs. When he dressed as He-Man? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was... I believe that was in one of the Halloween episodes. That was which... a great one. Absolutely. So, yeah, so there was the Abed is Batman episode where he and Troy really connected around around a lot of stuff and deepened their, deepened their friendship together. 
Uh, and then there was absolutely the tainted taco meat zombie episode where uh, where Troy dressed up as a sexy Dracula. And <laughs> uh, I think, Troy, I think you mean sexy vampire. I don't care what the Dracula's name is. Ugh, nerd. <laughs> I like it, yeah. Um, which of the – what else was there? Like, what other shows? Like, those are the three – I think those are probably, like, the three top ones that I can remember. Are there any other shows that were, like, had top-notch Halloween episodes? I think well, – I was going to say, one that one that people always call out when they talk about this sort of stuff is the How I Met Your Mother Halloween Yeah, episode. so I was Slutty Pumpkin. Exactly. That's my, right. My name for Joel. <laughs> You shouldn't be telling people that, Mike. I thought that was that was just me and you. Sorry, you spooked it out of me with that intro. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Like, what, did they have more than one? Oh, yeah, they always. The one? There was always that kept coming back, right? And every year there'd be some sort of like Barney dresses up as some sort of uh, thing to take advantage of uh, the ladies, and I, none of them are coming to my mind right now. Mike, what is what's what? What do you got? Uh, let's see. As far as far as other Halloween episodes, I, I'm not thinking specifically of How I Met Your Mother, but another huge one uh, as a kid was always the Charlie Brown episodes. Did you guys ever watch uh, watch the Charlie Brown and, and Snoopy cartoons when when you were younger? Now, are you talking of like the Great Pumpkin, or are you exactly talking about? What I'm talking about okay, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The Great Pumpkin's a classic. I actually bought the Great Pumpkin on DVD for like three dollars the other day. And plan on watching it with Mr. Hank in the next couple days. Ooh, that's a good call. Here's my question for you guys. And this is not a Halloween show, but there's the eternal debate of is Nightmare Before Christmas a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie? I know Mike has some thoughts on this. For me, I go Halloween. Like, oh, that's, that's my take on it. It is. 100%. 100%. Like, everyone there is very Halloween-y. It takes place primarily in the world of Halloween. Um, sure, like, it, it comes back and circles back to Christmas. But for me, it's it's a Halloween movie. I hate to say this, Carl, but I completely agree with you. Sorry for the fake out. Yeah, I would, I would love to think of it as a Christmas movie, but it's really about the value of, uh, of injecting a little Halloween spirits into... The 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 in need of uh, energizing uh, a Christmas holiday. So so yeah, absolutely see it a uh, see it as a Halloween movie. But I do tend to watch it around Christmas time every once in a while. I'm it, fairly certain one of you may get mad at me about this, but I've never actually seen The Nightmare Before Christmas. I honestly would have been more surprised if you had seen it. So I'm not gonna. I don't know. It's true. I don't really watch movies, but. That has been, I don't know why that's one, I have no really, I have no reason why I haven't watched it, just haven't. That's allowed. So, yeah. What about, like, when you still dressed up, and maybe, you know, let's, let's, let's keep it on as a child, what was your favorite costume you ever dressed up as? T-Rex. I was a T-Rex one year, and it was awesome. Ooh, that's a good one. Um... I've been a ninja like 14 times over the years, <laughs> most recently in college. Uh, but I have to say, uh, my favorite costume as a child probably combined my two loves, uh, which was one, getting to hold a sword, and two, sporting some type of mustache. So I'm going to go with Genghis Khan. I was Genghis Khan when I was a giant 10-year-old, <laughs> and it was one of the best costumes I ever had. Cause I, had a, I had a Fu Manchu mustache that went like all the way down... And then I got to carry around this gigantic curved plastic sword all night that I probably broke over a friend's back at some point. But that's that's neither here nor there. Genghis Khan was definitely my my favorite costume as a child. I am going to echo Mike's sentiments of my love of facial hair and my love of cutlery. Mine was a pirate. Um, I had a a mean pirate costume with full beard. Um, It was it was good times. And the sword was really what what the sword sorted. The so I, the, yeah, that's never mind. I was a train once. <laughs> How were you a train? <laughs> like I was just like I guess like I was a con- I was like the conductor, but I had a train like built onto me out of cardboard. 
That sounds pretty know. good. What was your worst costume? Um, this is, I was going to add onto that of things that are like, I, w- I went as a kangaroo one year. That was pretty good. Um, honestly, I don't remember like a bad one. I think I went as Batman one year and it was like, it was one of those store bought ones. I was probably very excited at the time, but also like every kid is Batman. So in hindsight, it was very, uh, trendy of me. Yeah, I uh, I was also Batman one year. It was last year. Uh, <laughs> I have seen those. I I almost used one of those for a uh, a photoshopping this week. Oh, good. <laughs> but I've been Batman for the last two years, actually. Uh, but the reason that I bought the Batman costume uh, was because uh, I made my worst costume purchasing decision of my life actually just a couple years ago. Not because it was a bad idea, but because I didn't look too carefully at the sizing information in the costume when I bought it. So I, I bought a He-Man costume uh, to, to get my Pierce on uh, two years ago. But it came in a single piece uh, that was both you know pants and, uh, and muscle shirt. Uh, and it was clearly designed for someone who was about 5 foot 10 inches tall. And me with all of my 6 foot 3-ness, uh, one, it was very interesting to see the, the furry little foot top sitting about mid-shin and two, the costume raised the octave of my voice like by two or two or three meters because it was a little tight in some very sensitive areas. So that's what I would say is my worst costume of my Halloween career. Which really uh, defeats the purpose of He-Man with the high voice. Yeah. I have sure. the power! So uh, my worst one... My brother went as Robin Hood one year, and so my mother forced me to go as Friar Tuck. <laughs> it, was, it was not a good, not a good. I was, I don't remember being very happy about it. That's, that uh, sounds incredibly terrible. Oh, uh, it was, it was miserable. <laughs> so, Joel, here's a brown cloth. Go wear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Also, I'm going to shave the top of your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Enjoy school. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that was that was yeah, that was probably my worst Halloween. I don't think I would that may have been my last Halloween where I went trick or treating. Yeah. Um so I think like for me I'm in the same boat as Joel. I ended the Halloween pretty early on. I was not one of those kids um going out in like my te- my teen years trick or treating. I was just like I'll just eat the candy at home. My mom's already bought it. I don't I'm I'm up on the ruse. Like they just sell this candy on sale everywhere. I can just go to the store and buy some. Um so what I was doing instead was sitting at home playing the video games like most of our generation probably was at that point in time. You're with your friends playing video games. I'm sure Joel when you're handing out those candies, making kids those kids dance, you also were probably on the games. Um, mm-hmm. what was your guys like first foray into video games? What was the first game that you remember? NBA jam. Sega Genesis NBA jam. That was like me and my one friend. We played that for hours upon hours upon hours. I can't like, yeah, that was like my first go to. Yeah. Wait, so before, th- wait, I I realized something. There was something that I wanted to share before we as as my lead into this conversation. One thing I don't think we've ever covered on the fifth line is our origin story. We know that everyone loves an origin story. Do we want to get into that now or save that for another day? I I think this is a this is probably the most appropriate conversation topic we're ever going to have to tell this story. All right. Well, let's. Joel, Joel's just staring at the screen. I can't tell his emotions Joel's one way or a... the other. That's fine. Um, I'm so, about to rage quit. Oh, okay. Well, that wouldn't be the first time we've experienced that. Um, so. Oh, wow. Shots fired. So, through a, uh, a myriad of ways, and I think actually um, the way that we. So, Joel and I have known each other for many, many moons. Not video games related, certainly bonded over video games many times. But um, the way we know Mike and the way we met Mike the first time was I met his friend uh, playing Battlefield, actually. 
of all things. We we met him, and I don't remember how we got connected because up until this point, I'd never actually like talk to someone that i'd met through video games consistently and sure it was just like if we're on we'd play together but i'd never had that and so we we played with this guy and then um the game destiny came out and i got it and not knowing who anyone else who got it was um i just heard it would be good and i was buying the uh back of the day e3 Amazon would have like there you need to buy three. And so I was buying NHL. I was buying Madden and I needed another game. And I was like, this game has good reviews. Let's get that. Whatever. Um, little did I know that that game would replace all other video games in my repertoire for the next multiple years. And so sure enough, Mike and his friend both had got the game, started playing it, met Mike. Um, and one thing led to another. Here we are. So Mike, Carl and Joel, are proud members of the Must Like Jokes clan on Destiny. That's our, that's our one rule. We have one rule if you're going to play with us. Got to like jokes. Don't have to be good at the video game. Lord knows that. Yeah, none of us are. That would actually be, like, if we had a second rule, it would be can't be good at the video game. Yeah, that will ruin my, that will ruin my enjoyment. If somebody's actually good and makes me feel bad about myself, I'm out. Yeah, uh, but Carl, I like I like the way you, the way you tell that story. Uh, I tend to abbreviate things in, in a way that causes some people to think I'm just a hopeless romantic about our friendship. Because a lot of people say like, "So, so Mike, how did you meet Carl and Joel?" And I just look them in the eye and I say, "It was destiny." So I like that. That's that's beautiful, Mike. Yeah, this is it. Was, it was, I, I I think that fate brought us together because when else would I ever have the chance to talk to a banana and a shark at the same time? Yeah. You guys have so, changed my life. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so no, now that, no. so, so what, but like, so really this is actually, this whole conversation now is our origin story because for me, Without NBA Jam, there would be no destiny. So what was the one, what was the video game or the video games that you guys were playing early on in your life that brought you to where you are now? For me, my first game was on the Nintendo's just not Nintendo. There was no 64. Just regular Nintendo. Um, and I almost, honestly only had Mario slash Duck Hunt. And that was it. I didn't have anything else. There was one. That's not true. My dad had also bought a submarine game, which I do not recall the name of, but it was very hard and I was super terrible at it. Um, and that was it. Like we didn't have anything else. And I had to play it on this super tiny. It was about like a nine inch black and white TV. And so for years, Mario was just a black and white game to me it had no color um and the hours that i would spend playing on this tiny tv was endless it, it didn't get until later um i'll let mike go first but it wasn't until later that i really got into it and we can get into that after mike shares his oh yeah and carl just just wondering if your dad's submarine game might have been silent service is the Ooh, is the Nintendo that's, entertainment system that sounds system. that sounds correct yeah let me let me google it and see what i know the picture that was it silent service yeah there we go. Yeah, Nintendo Entertainment uh, System, the NES. Now you're, now you're talking my language. Uh, as the resident old man on, on the fifth line, I was terrified that any video games that I talk about from being young, uh, you guys would not remember. So Carl gives me great comfort to know that you were at least on the NES also. And this is ironic because, honest to goodness, this is probably one of the games I played the most of when I was a young child. Uh, and it resulted in absolutely zero uptick in my knowledge of that sport, NES Ice Hockey. That was my jam back in the day. The Nintendo Entertainment System's ice hockey game where you arranged your own custom uh, five on the ice of people of varying body types and skill sets where you can choose the fat slowies, you can choose the little speedy, the skinny speedy guys, or you can cho- choose like the more well-rounded medium built guys with the low center of gravity. And it also supported fighting on the ice in a hockey game. As a seven-year-old who was just getting used to video games for the first time, that was one of the most profound joys of my video gaming uh, experience so far, 
is the first time that my brother and I were just hitting each other with, with sticks on, on the ice, and all of a sudden, a fight broke out. It was, uh, I don't want to say it was a life-changing experience, but it was something that definitely invested me much, much, much deeper in video games than I otherwise would have. Can we propose to change the name of Must Like Jokes to the Fat Slowies? <laughs> <laughs> I just I think that's much more appropriate. Uh, de- yeah, de- definitely in my life it is. Um, yeah, for me, I actually so for hockey, the first hockey game that I played was at a friend's house, and it wasn't any of the stereotypical NHLs. Um, it was, and I'm trying to actually find it. It was like a version of uh, it was like monsters or like zombie hockey um, on Sega. And I, I I cannot remember the name of it, but that was the first my first experience with a hockey video game, um, and so we played that. But for myself, the first Mutant Hockey League that's what it was called. Um, that was a great time for me. The first NHL game that I actually had myself was NHL '99. Eric Lindros on the cover. Um, that was that was it for me. So uh, lots of many many hours, and I actually I had that one for PC. Um, I went console for many, many generations. And so I I didn't have anything. I actually, the, the next one I got was the original PlayStation. So you can kind of look at that gap. I went from Nintendo to PlayStation 1. Um, and so, I, you know, NHL 99 on the, on the PC was my first foray into hockey video games. And I was sold. As much as I played Mario, this was, this was it. Especially like, Summer vacation, play that in the morning, go then hit the bikes with friends for the rest of the day. Yeah. So I I had, I forget, I don't remember what it's called, but I had a hockey game for Super Nintendo. And that was like my intro into it. And it was like, I'm pretty sure it was 93. I want to say 93. It might not, maybe it might have been later than that. But like it had like, yeah, I remember it had like, um, it had Doug Gilmore on the Leafs, and so that's all I cared about. Um, but I, I played that game for hours and hours. I I also played not ninety nine, but NHL ninety eight. My my neighbors had it for their for their computer, and they would let me come over, and I would play Team Canada versus Team Japan over <laughs> and over and over. Not surprisingly, I crushed them every game. Um, but the thing that I remember about 98 versus 99 is that in 98, there was fighting, but in 99, goalie fights. So um, as I'm doing this, I'm fairly certain you can hear Henry in the background. If you can't, that's amazing because he's currently standing beside the door that I, of the room that I'm in talking very loudly at well hey, shout, no. shout out to him say hi back um oh there, yeah i there, I, there doubt, I doubt our listeners could hear but um if they do they get to know that that's that's joel's wonderful son he's just trying to tell us about his favorite video games yeah um his is probably at this point destiny that's he sees dad playing that yeah it's de- oh yeah i i'm full on have the uh remote that has that doesn't have any battery life in it, and I give it to him, and, and he's sitting there thinking that he's playing with me. Not at all, but he loves it. Well, that's, I am very glad that he can be a part of that. Uh, for me, I, what I went from NHL was I finally did get the console, and for some reason, um, I don't know how this was happened or what why it was, um, I got a PlayStation for Christmas one year, and... We went to the store. There was going to be a big blizzard coming because I lived on the east coast of Canada. Those are a big thing there. A blizzard was coming. We knew things were going to get shut down. So on Christmas Day, we drove out to the Blockbuster, and I rented Madden. I want to say 2002? It was, it was on the cover. It was the one with Marshall Falk on the cover. So this was like peak greatest show on turf. 2001 was Eddie George. Okay, then yeah, it might have been 2000. 2000 2002 I, was Dante Culpepper. Okay, so I had both Eddie George and Dante Culpepper. So it, might, it must have been 2000 then. Maybe even sooner. Maybe 99? Either way, that was it for me. The Marshall Falk cover was 
my first foray into according to this there was no 2003 2003 well this is not true it must have been before that because i definitely had eddie george and dante culpepper so maybe it was the eddie george years the one i got um that was my first oh it was definitely before that yeah because when madden uh 2004 with mike vick that was by the time joel and i were hanging out because i that was a crazy year of madden all those hours spent in joel's basement fighting for who would get to be michael vick oh um, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> oh uh that was madden was broken that year yeah because um, whoever that we had a mike vick we had a no Mike Vig rule after a while. Yeah, we had to implement a, a number of rules, including no Mike Vick. Uh, I did. You guys ever? I I've been known to play some baseball games. Like the older I got, but to this day, I still think triple play ninety nine might be the best sports video game of all time. Whoa. I'm going, I don't even think it's the best baseball game of all time. I personally was a huge fan of Ken Griffey. Like the For first Super one. Nintendo. I, Super I, Nintendo. I fell in love with the six, N64 version. That was, okay. my, that was my favorite one. So um, The that, Super that's... Nintendo was better than the N64 version. Ooh, I was, not, I was not blessed with the opportunity to play that one. Yeah, that one, I play. I loved that game too, but like, Triple Play 99, man. Like, that was, that was such a good game. That was like, it was just so much, like, further along than any other game at that point. I had 2000. That was mine. The Sammy Sosa one. So, um, but definitely, like, sports games have been a huge part of me falling in love, not just with video games, but sports in general. Like, for me, the amount that I've played them and, just gotten great joy and learning them, you know, how much, and I think, you know, we can uh, steal the idea. I believe it was from Bill Simmons who had that just every NFL team should hire some 14 year old kid who plays Madden to stand on the sidelines and make play calls. I had no idea any play calls. I was actually like buying coaching books. I think my dad had a coaching book and I have to buy it. He had a football coaching book. Um, And I was reading that book to figure out how I could become a better Madden player because uh, I wanted to call my own plays. Sure, you could get them to call your plays for you, but that's how I learned what a zone defense was, what a cover two was, what a cover three was, the difference between them. It wasn't just, yeah, whatever, pick my defense, I don't care. I wanted to call those. I figured out what a draw was. Like All these plays, all this terminology was learned through Madden. And we have an entire generation of people now who've learned football, not through playing it, not the nuances of it through playing it or watching TV, but through video games yeah absolutely i mean it definitely serves to deepen the sense of 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 immersion you get in the fantasy and you know some of the video games to today really enable you to do that i mean this might be embarrassing for some people but no news to carl and joel i'm a big fan of the nba 2k franchise and every year actually i'm gonna put it this way it's been a long time since i've played an actual basketball game in the nba 2k franchise of one regular team playing against another regular team What my NBA 2K has devolved into is I create a roster of all of my best friends and turn them into professional basketball players. So I I might have a six foot nine Carl playing point guard for me and a seven foot three Joel collecting about 23 rebounds a night playing center. Whereas, uh, whereas I get to be the silky smooth three point shooting small forward. Uh, So to take it a step further, it's not just that it makes me appreciate sports a little more. It lets me d- dive a little bit deeper into the fantasy of actually being an athlete myself. And, oh, God, I love it. Yeah. And I think that's what makes these games so much fun is you can put yourself into the games. And they've made a big thing about that. And, um, you know, learning who players are. You, you start to, you know, you're, you're wanting to make a trade because all of these games, either you can trade everything or nothing. Either trading is super broken and it ruins the game or... You can never make any trades and it's pointless. So they always seem to lean towards broken. Everything's way more like scoring is way higher in video games than it is in real life. So there's things that you need to be aware of that are different. But for me, um, I just I love 
the fact of how much you can learn about things. And, you know, I've, I've tried to learn a lot about basketball through the 2K series. And I have figured out a little bit, mostly through my losses. I am, even on like the lowest of difficulties, I am the worst NBA video game player ever. Uh, see, I'm more like Mike in like any game that I like, I'll like try and like play the game normally. Like I'll play a season or whatever in Madden or baseball. And then like, eventually I get to the point where I just create like just giant guys who crush baseballs and <laughs> this is ridiculous. I can't pay attention at all right now. <laughs> These two guys are dancing in their costumes and waving. This is just, it's over. Happy it's Halloween, Joel. Happy Halloween. Um, so I think, I I don't know. I, I've lost my train of thought. You you talk about something. Are, are, are we are done? We, is it time to go home? It might it might be time to go trick or treating, Joel. Might be time. Um, so you know what you should do. Oh, I I totally forgot to do this. See, I knew I was going to forget to do this. I was totally going to like drop some hints about my big announcement. No, oh, drop one right show. now. I don't I don't remember what it is. I can't pay attention with you two hooligans. Is that wine? <laughs> oh, this is whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I couldn't tell from here. So, um, you can find us I, We on... now know why Mike has to shield his eyes from the light. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Find us on the Alberta Podcast Network. Did you... you can... Did we need to do a live read? Um, I think we... Act... Yeah, let's do a live read right now. You can find, uh, lots of great shows on the Alberta Podcast Network. Um, and obviously, I don't know what to say here so we're gonna we're gonna filibuster while i find this is this whole thing's been derailed so you figure out what you need to do mike's gonna tell us about what he's gonna what his plans for halloween are well i'll tell you guys i didn't really have any plans for halloween quite yet but i just made some i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna listen to i have some notes a new podcast in the alberta podcast network so on i have some notes we punch up mediocre movies one podcast at a time hosted by greg beaver and colin mcintyre I have some notes on the Alberta Podcast Network. Mike has to do all of our live reads from now on for all eternity. Um, yeah, that's good. Do you guys know I'm going to a football game this weekend? Ooh, I'm excited about that. Yeah, in the lane of freedom. Um, like in a, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be that much closer to Mike. Just a I'm gonna be in closer. his country. You're gonna be further from me though. Only temporarily. Maybe you know, a little bit. And in a while, Joel's going to be an awful lot closer to you, Carl. Is, is, does that count as, you, as is, Joel's Is hint? that the hint? So uh, people, people have guessed correctly what the big news is. Yeah. I've gotten messages on Twitter from people guessing, and they've guessed it. So some people We're have, pregnant! Some people have not guessed it, yes. The fifth line's having a baby. Um, Pod baby, yeah. No, well, some some people have guessed it, some people haven't. We you'll find out on this week's fourth line, which will come out in like two days. So just wait, just slow down, but enjoy this episode. You can re-listen to this, save it if you want to save it till Halloween. You're already at the end. You've made a mistake. Um, so re-listen to it on Halloween. You're welcome. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry for anyone who's still listening. Uh, this this one really went off the rails. We we had some good stuff planned for you guys and. Um, if maybe if Mike hadn't have been drinking that wine all night <laughs> pre gaming the podcast, that's fine. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Fourth Line Podcast. Let us know your favorite candy costume. I don't know. Wish us a happy Halloween. We like that. If you want to send us candy, you can tweet at us and uh, ask for our addresses, and we'll give them to you. Um, if you want to support us on patreon you can do that too patreon.com slash fourth line podcast the fourth line podcast.com is where you can find everything if you want to email us facebook just go there we're all there obviously we are part of the great alberta podcast network powered by atb and until next time boom city boo city